So how is life in Libya nowadays? Um, it's uh, relaxed. It's uh, better than it and was? Peace. It, 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 now it's better, yeah. Before it was a war and yeah. heating, you know, but now enough. Yeah. We know we want change. We know we want the best for us. Mm -hmm. Now we uh, we want tourists to come here to uh, raise our uh, economy. Uh, yeah. Is the future looking bright? Do you think? I think. Yeah. 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 Libya is one of the most complicated stories on earth. Gaddafi was in power since 1969. It was more than four decades. Forty-two years. Arab Spring uprising in 2011. They're saying that since 2011, this country has gone into complete chaos. We saved a lot of Libyan lives. Libya. A country torn apart by civil war for the past decade. But how is the situation on the ground now, today? Gaining access into Libya is extremely difficult and complicated. No tourists are allowed. Only business visas are issued. After two years of trying to get into Libya, I was finally able to obtain a business visa for this extremely restricted and controlled country. So, here we go. <laughs> It's only gonna get better and better. Comme l'exigent les Libyens eux-mêmes. Now, could we have done more after uh, the uh, Gaddafi regime uh, was ended? Well, that's always, uh, uh, you know, second guessing, and I'm sure that there's more we could have done. But let's look at what we did do. A complex and highly dangerous situation. The international effort that we have led in Libya. We finally have hope that our nightmare of 40 years will soon be over. Good morning from Tripoli, Libya. I'm a bit in a bit of a hurry today. I've got to head down, meet my driver, and then we're heading along the coast to a different township, and then we're going to explore different parts of the country. But you'll see as it unfolds. But yeah, be another beautiful day here in the capital of Libya. Not sure how the day's gonna go. You never really know in this country. If you didn't see the last video, check that out because we got in a bit of hot water. We kind of got taken away in a police car in question. Anyway, long story, check out the video. But for now, let's go jump on the road, see what else Libya brings. Always a bit nervous in the mornings here because it's very strict, especially with the camera and things. So, got to be on the lookout. Uh, something just I'll ask you, know, you. yeah, yeah. Hello, yeah. Hello, Okay, so we've arrived in a place called Sabrata, but let me explain what happened. So I come out of the hotel, there's a police cruiser sitting there waiting for me. I get a phone call from reception, there's somebody here for you, it's the police. And then my driver picks me up, we drive and we've got a police escort again, which if you've seen in the past videos, this isn't the first time this has happened. We had a private police escort, a car leading us through the city with its sirens on and lights flashing, getting cars to move out of the way for us. Once we got to this, the edge of this police officer's area that he's allowed to operate in, then we moved on to another police officer. So this other police car moved moved in seamlessly, took over the escort and the other one that took us for the first part dropped away. Then this other car took us the next stage until he dropped away. They're constantly monitoring us and you know it's for our own safety so you know much respect and thank you to the police officers. They've been very kind to us and we've arrived in this place called Sobrata. So there's lots of buildings you know all over Libya you know even if you're in the middle of nowhere in the desert you see buildings with bullet holes and things, and today was no different. We've seen lots of really badly damaged buildings. Even a, a bridge was wiped out, so we had to go around it. 
Anyway, we're here. There's some Roman ruins here. That's the kind of thing that happens here in Libya is, you know, we're here to see the historic sites and, you know, to get any access. I've said this a thousand times is an absolute privilege. So I'm very grateful that, you know, we see what we see on the way, but mainly we're here to see the sites. We do meet people on the way and ask them questions and things about how life is here um, and pick up what we can. But um, yeah, we've got to stick to the program. It's very strict. It's very, very controlled. Anyway, let's see what we can we can find in here, and then we're heading back to Tripoli, and hopefully I'll, I'll be able to show you more of Tripoli. That's mainly what I'm interested in. But yeah, we'll um, come in here. That's that's how it works, and then we'll see what else we can come across. So we've explored around this site in Sabrata a little bit spent an hour or so over there in the other ruins but this is definitely my favorite part have a look at this so well maintained the, the columns over there if you're into history then and you want to you know come to Libya take the chance I highly recommend it because you have something like this which you know if this was in Europe or something there'd be thousands of tourists here but it's pretty much empty and these around me they're all local tourists um, and a few of them are with me and we also have um, police following us around but it's yeah it's just absolutely incredible to have a place like this to yourself you know Mussolini actually visited here there's a photo of him sitting down here really incredible hi how are you how are you welcome to our country oh thank you very much I'm happy I'm glad there is someone here to take picture and video and share this history our history yeah to show the other side of Libya yeah. right I am glad where, from where? New Zealand. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Do you see many tourists? Uh, no, I am from Libya. No, but do you see many foreigners around? Or it's rare? Uh, I, I see someone from Spain. Spain, uh -huh. Yeah, uh, because I am speak uh, Spanish. Okay. So he come to take pictures here and he come to Tripoli. Right. Uh, the capital. I don't know See if you know the place is Mitra. Mitra. Yeah, okay, in, sure. in the Tripoli. It uh -huh. is so interesting. If you can give me your number. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I send to you this article. Oh, great. Do you have Because I, I want to share this. With uh, the world. To, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My name is Eve. Eve. Yeah. I'm Nick. Nice to meet you. Nick. Me yeah. too. So how is life in Libya nowadays? Um, it's uh, relaxed. It's better than uh, it was? Peace. It, it, uh, now it's better, yeah. Before it was a war and yeah. heating, you know. But now... Enough. Yeah. We know we want change. We know the, we want the best for us. Mm -hmm. Now we uh, we want tourists to come here to uh, raise our uh, economy. Uh, yeah. Is the future looking bright? Do you think? I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 If everyone change from himself, so and with love and peace. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And it is my pleasure to know you. I'm yeah, you too. Send I'm me a happy. message and we'll yeah. uh, connect. I really hope that Libya continues to improve, you know? I hope. With the young people like me and all, we, we won't change, we won't... Uh, I mean, you know. It, it is a sad year, 2019. And, but thank, uh, thank uh, God now. We... I hope we go right. Right. Yeah. Positive future. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh well. Uh, my English not it is yeah, not good. very good. Better but than my uh, Arabic, eh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know some. Oh, only a words. few words. I speak uh, fluently Spanish. Oh wow, nice. Yeah. Have you traveled in Spain? Yeah, and oh. to uh, America Latina. Okay, so, Latin America. Uh, uh, yeah. What countries? Uh, Colombia, Venezuela, uh -huh. oh, Venezuela, Caracas. What yeah. year? Uh, last year I was in. You were in Caracas. Yeah. It is beautiful. It's a it's dangerous place. I was there in 2019. In if you, yeah, it, it is, um, there's some places dangerous, but at uh, the same time, I, uh, some places high class. You're a, you're a strong <laughs> person, eh? Yeah. Confident. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, it was lovely to meet you. Same thing. Send me a message and we'll, we'll talk. Okay. All right, See you. thanks. Ciao. And welcome. Bye. Thank you. 
I just want to take a quick second out and say thank you very much to Private Internet Access VPN for sponsoring this video. I'm sure by now you know what a VPN is, but if you don't, a VPN is a virtual private network which assigns you a new IP address so you can protect yourself from basically the big bad internet is how I look at it. Whenever you're signing into a public Wi-Fi network, whether it's at an airport or a shopping mall or a cafe or something along those lines, you're basically agreeing for the network to basically take all your information from your phone. When you have a VPN, you're basically putting a buffer, a blockage between that. Other benefits of a VPN is you can actually access geo-blocked content on websites like Netflix, even YouTube. There's some things on YouTube that you have to be in certain countries to watch. I'm often using a VPN to watch shows on Netflix and things that are maybe only available in the UK or in America, for example. I use a VPN every day on all my devices and I have done for a few years now. Private internet access is available on all platforms, Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and many others. A strict no logs policy is in place. You can use one subscription to protect up to 10 devices at the same time. There's a 30 day money back guarantee. If you use the link in the description below, it'll only cost you $2.08 a month for three years plus two months free. So thank you to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. Back to Libya. Yay. We then went for a walk around the streets of downtown Tripoli. This time I'm filming on my phone because if you saw the last video, walking around with my big camera didn't end well. But you can see the streets here. It feels very stable. People are going about their day, selling their goods. Really beautiful old city with the Italian architecture. So I'm back in Europe now. What an insane trip that was in Libya. It felt a lot safer than I had expected it to, to feel. Of course, there was a lot of presence of authorities and things, but again, reiterating that they treated me very well. I had you guys ask me some questions on my Instagram. I'm going to address some of those. They were a lot about some specific topics, so I'm going to try and cover them into one answer, and then I'll move on to a few individual questions. The question I was asked the most was about visa and access into the country. And as you know, like I mentioned in the start of the videos, I've been trying to get to Libya for two years. A friend of mine called Jordan actually gave me the contact details of Abu Bakr, who was my tour guide, and he was able to facilitate the, the visa process and the application and the flights and everything and everything on the ground. As you know, getting into Libya itself, that's the first hurdle, and then traveling within Libya is also very complicated. In terms of how the visa process is, you know, because I mentioned it's a business visa, I can't really go into details because it's quite a sensitive topic and I don't really want to you know go into extreme details about that just because this is obviously public if any of you are interested in going to Libya and you like what you saw in my videos or you want to see more of the country you want to see it with your own eyes experience it experience the feelings it is quite nerve-wracking sometimes but I did feel a lot safer in Libya than I have in other countries I visited I had a few questions asking me how does it rate in terms of how intimidated you felt or how unsafe you felt. Honestly speaking, Libya is nowhere near how unsafe I've felt in other countries, which is really surprising considering the media over the last decade of, of the war and things, which obviously did happen and it has been dangerous in the past. Currently, fingers crossed it stays that way. It's reasonably stable now, you know, relatively to the region of Libya. If you do want to visit, I will leave Abu Bakr's information below, his email address and his WhatsApp phone number, and you can get in touch with him and let him know that I sent you and he can facilitate the, uh, the process and, you know, even if if you're not sure just ask him a few questions how it works and things if you want and he will help you out he speaks really good English don't hesitate to reach out to Abu Bakr if you want to go to Libya now or in the future I got a question here from Carly Seedal 
Hey Nick, did you get a chance to talk to any migrants or make any observations about the migrant situation in Libya? This is a topic I wanted to cover but I didn't really have the chance to do it on the ground but I'm happy to speak about it now. There are many migrants in Libya from what I saw. You see them waiting on the side of the road to pick up odd jobs and things and I did see them working some labor jobs and of course Libya is one of the main goals for migrants to head to and then from there they'll try and head to Europe, maybe Italy, to some Mediterranean islands. It's unfortunate that I didn't get the chance to interview one of them. I wish I could have told more of that story but as I said it's not easy to film in Libya and uh, I, I did did push the boundaries a lot you know that's something that I didn't mention too much in the videos but I was really pushing the boundaries you know really trying to get a greater access which I did and I was very grateful for but you know there's so much more in that country that I would love to have dug up you know here is a, a question 21st century house husband hi Nick love your videos my question is what are Libyan authorities so afraid of I don't necessarily know if they're afraid but I guess you're meaning like why were there the police escorts and things. The reason is, is because foreigners are just so rare in Libya. You know, it might be because, you know, they feel it an honor to help out a foreigner. It could also be they wouldn't want on the off chance of something happened to me. It would reflect very badly on the country. International media would cover it and things and it would just not be good. Especially in this climatic time that Libya is going through where things are looking positive, you know. You've seen earlier in this video the, the young girl that we met. She was saying, you know, the future is looking more positive and hopefully the fighting's in the past. So to have something happen to a foreigner and for it to be covered by international media that wouldn't be a good look for the country and they're, they're aware of that so again you know the authorities treated me very well but you know they were cautious and they were aware of where I was and when I was in those places. Teddy what was your favorite thing about this trip and why? Definitely having my preconceived ideas absolutely shattered you know I thought that Libya was going to be up there with one of the most intense and most dangerous countries I've visited again going back on the, the brutal past and that's not even you know a year ago or so they were still having major issues with war and things and it's very evident you've seen in the footage the bullet holes and the heavy presence of police and things it was significantly safer than I expected and felt a lot more calm than I had thought one of the main reasons I like going to countries like this to really see what it's like on the ground after seeing what it's like in the media and things and to actually get a taste of standing on the dirt of, of a place like Libya with the, the history, you know, the very sad history of course, but to be there on this hinge of when it's moving into a positive direction, again that's going off the people that I've spoken to, that's what they've told me and that's all I can go off. That was probably the highlight, a combination of all those things. So this is another question that I got a lot from many local Libyan people. Aussie G asks, will you be checking out Benghazi? Had many other questions asking, will I be going to the east and things? I would have loved to have gone to the east and to explore more and to meet the people over there, but it just wasn't logistically possible at the time. I hope in the future that'll be possible. I really do hope that I can make it over to that part of the country, possibly in the future, and meet some people, hear what they have to say. Obviously Obviously there's been lots of infighting and things and I would have loved to see you know all sides of the country. Unfortunately you know again to get what I got I'm extremely lucky to have got that but of course I always would have wanted more and wanted to explore more of the country. Question from Liam Allison. Love your videos mate. Series in Libya is amazing. Thank you very much Liam. My question for you is as a young person do you recommend traveling to places where the media tells you not to go if you've never traveled solo? Complex question. It depends in what context the media is telling you not to go there and if you've never traveled before I would recommend going to some more tame places first not just you know jumping in the deep end it's probably going to be quite the shock. It's best to work your way up like anything in life I guess. I always recommend you know people to visit Thailand and things first. Thailand is a great country and hopefully when it opens back up after this situation that we're all facing Thailand's always a great place to start. There is the culture shock but it's very tourist friendly and you still get to you know see a different culture and meet lots of people so I would recommend starting in like Southeast Asia and then from there you know slowly start to push the boundaries. India is also a good place because it's extreme travel. It'll teach you a lot of lessons about life. I highly recommend India as the first kind of place to go. The universe of travel I think India. Every time you go to India you learn lessons you know it's one of the hardest countries to travel but uh, one of the most fun because of how rewarding it is when you uh, face these challenges that's what I would recommend. Definitely don't recommend as your first trip to just fly to Libya or Afghanistan or, or wherever it may be. Start small build your way up and if you like it then continue. I'm not promoting any kind of extreme travel I think it's up to the individual how, what they want to do with their lives if you want to go to somewhere that somebody tells you you shouldn't go that should be your choice. You take the risks. If something happens to you, of course, that's on your back. 
Like if anything happened to me, that's my choice. I take that, I take full responsibility. You gotta make the decision yourself, but for sure, start small. So I got like, I think 300 questions or so, so obviously I can't answer them all, but thank you so much for all your questions. I did try to, you know, group a lot of them into specific categories. This will be my last video for a little while. I'm gonna be taking a bit of time off YouTube. These trips are quite intense, as you've seen, and uh, the year has been amazing so far with the filming and things. There was Lebanon, there was Brazil and Honduras, Chernobyl, and now Libya, and so it's been quite action-packed and a lot of these countries are quite emotionally gripping to do them back to back to back it can be quite intense sometimes so it's it's important for me to you know take a step back regroup and then come back and then make more videos I do have my next countries in mind already so don't worry about that but yeah I hope that you'll stay tuned for the next series but I'll be back in a while after I take a bit of time for myself I hope that you guys can understand that I am again blown away by your support as always it's uh, unreal to to think where we are and almost at 1 million subscribers you know I don't really talk about subscribers that much but you know it is obviously quite significant and I'm I'm really touched and I thank you guys so much for your support and I never thought I'd be standing here saying such a thing. On my break I will be doing a few Q&A's on my Patreon, some other content over there. If you want to check that out I'll leave the Patreon link below. I'll just be doing some like general Q&A's and maybe a few clips of some other traveling. I might be doing some like uh, mountain climbing and things but nothing too in depth, just a few clips here and there. If you want to check that out I'll leave the Patreon link below. Thank you again and thank you to everybody in Libya for having me in your country. If you want to go or you want to learn more about it then hit up Abu Bakr in the description. He'll help facilitate your trip to Libya. Otherwise, take care of yourselves. People in the Northern Hemisphere have a great summer. People in the Southern Hemisphere, I hope that you're keeping warm. I know back where I'm from in New Zealand, it's snowing now, so I'm happy to be here in a t-shirt, to be honest. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.